postpone and just move your wedding to a later date um, instead of canceling because you've spent tons of time and a good amount of money and to lose out on the effort and time and, and finances that you put into planning this um, just seems really sad to me. So I encourage couples to really work with their vendor team and discuss options and try to come to like a mutually um, agreeable solution. Absolutely. I think the mantra within the wedding space, especially for the vendors right now is postpone, don't cancel. Um, because, you know, as vendors, we work really, really hard to get your guys' business. That's a lot of effort that, that you as an individual client don't see is how much time and energy goes into our marketing goes into us actually having you find us and decide to work with us. So to be at this point on the vendor side and have clients deciding just, ah, oh, forget it. I just want my money back. I don't want to do it. That's a situation where for the vendor, it's going to hit hardest. And for the couple, it's also probably going to hit hardest for them because your vendor already put a bunch of time and energy into it. So they're probably not going to be able to give you a refund or a full refund particularly. So that's where postponing the vendor can have a lot more flexibility. You know, maybe there's a slight fee, maybe there's not a fee at all, but they're going to want to work with you. And the main thing is, is to realize like getting your business took time, energy, money. Um, there was a lot of energy probably put into your project already at this point. If they were designing things, if they were sourcing materials and information for you, or perhaps if they're a caterer or something like that, they may already have a fridge full of food that is now not going to be used for your event. And that cost is already a real hard cost for them. So it's going to need to be covered. So finding ways to utilize those things as well as, you know, making good on this commitment you guys made to each other to work with each other and figuring out what that looks like, whether it is doing a small elopement ceremony now, whether it is moving the entire thing back to a later date and time. Um, because here locally in San Diego, I know a lot of the county offices in the state are closing. So you can't get a marriage license right now, which in itself means if you did do a small ceremony right now, it's just a commitment ceremony that is ceremonial. It's not going to be a legal ceremony. So um, all those factors are there. It's a lot. It's going to vary wherever you are, but just know staying in the, in the agreement, in that um, commitment to your vendors is going to give you the power to avoid losing money and also really help their business continue. Because if everybody chose to cancel these, you will see a huge amount of wedding industry pros go out of business during the next six months. For sure. And I touched on that today. I had a podcast with Lauren Grove. And one of the things we talked about is this is a situation that's not like weather. You know, when it's weather, we know when it's going to be over. We don't really have a date. We don't know when we're going to be able to move forward. Um, and so we, you know, we are also dealing with multiple couples. So as a venue owner, as a DJ, as a photographer, as a florist, you know, there's multiple couples that we're dealing with. And so what we're trying to do is, you know, Obviously, March weddings are our priority, April weddings in May, and then, you know, we move on just depending on what we hear. So um, I don't think, you know, again, no one's thinking straight right now, but I don't think couples understand that, yes, there's already a lot. It's, an, it's something that we should have been educating them from the get-go. There's already a lot that every single one of these vendors have put into it. Um, and we will find a date if, you know, if it's available, but your vendor may not be able to fulfill that date if it's already been um, you know, starting on the calendar for another couple. So I think giving them time and then just not, I know we're all uncertain, but understanding that we're taking it day by day with y'all as well. We don't have all the answers either, um, but that it could be a situation where there are vendors that cannot get through this. Some companies are larger. They have multiple people, which is still a little bit harder because they have to pay these employees. Um, other vendors are doing this part-time. They may have a full-time job that they're relying on that they may not be able to go back to and other vendors may just be booked year round. So we really need to look at all the possibilities as we're kind of working and learning together. Um, what are your thoughts around um, couples really, again, I know we talked about postponing, not canceling, but I have seen a lot of couples that are just like, I can't deal with this, I'm going to cancel, do a small elopement or maybe just do a small ceremony. Have you guys seen a lot of that on your group pages or with your groups? I have not personally seen a lot of that. Um guys this is stressful this is a lot emotionally to go through i've been 
telling anyone I'm talking to, like, you are grieving. Like, it seems kind of silly in a way to, from the outside, like you're grieving an event that, you know, was supposed to happen, but it's a dream. It's something you've been putting your time, energy, money into. So give yourself space for that and know that right now may be really hard for you to think about working on a new date. It may be where you're mentally just exhausted and you don't want to take it on, but give yourself a little bit of time. You may want to do that elopement. And then in a few months, once things start calming down, you can kind of get your footing again, life goes back fully to normal. You will then probably be feeling a lot more secure and ready to move forward with a wedding celebration um, or the reception or whatever you want to call it that was delayed. Um, and I think you have to remember that even though right now it's tough, that your friends, your family, all those reasons you were moving ahead with this event in the first place are still there. And those people still really do want to celebrate with you. It's just a public safety issue right now. So I wouldn't, I, I would give yourself the ability to pause basically and just go, you know what? I'm going to tell my vendors, I don't, I don't want to work on this right now. And if it ends up being my second anniversary, when I have this party, so be it, I'm going to follow up in August when I feel like my life is stable and then I'll move ahead and that's okay. And your vendors, like we said, if you're postponing should be very flexible and trying to accommodate whatever they can with you. Um, and that's kind of just what we're all, we're all in this together. We're all just trying to make the best we can out of this situation. That's great. Jessica, thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. I, I do think like I personally in my group have seen a lot of um, women say, you know, I have an emotional attachment to this date. We chose this particular date for a special reason. It means something very special to them. And so they are choosing to, you know, do something super intimate, even if it's just having an efficient come to their home and marry them in their home um, in front of just their parents or whatever it might be. We've seen a little bit of that. And so I think in this situation where everything's so kind of up in the air and um, like, like you mentioned, we don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know, you know, we might be trying to reschedule, um, a wedding for a midsummer date, but are things going to be back to normal by then? We, we really don't know. And I, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom at all. Um, I want to stay positive and, and hope that it all, you know, sweeps over quickly, but, um, the reality is we don't know. And so, um, if, if that's something that you want to explore doing something super intimate, doing even like an elopement, um, somewhere close within driving distance where you keep, you know, the social distance in mind um, from other people. I think that's great too. Really, um, it, it's just about you and your partner's priorities and, and what you uh, feel like is the best choice for you right now. Great. And I like what you said earlier, Heather, we just need to pause. I think couples are just trying to overthink things. There is no, yeah. there is no option right now to replan anyway, because we don't know when we're going to replan. Yeah. Um, and, and I think sometimes we're, we make decisions off of emotions that later on we can't change. And these are those types of situations, mm -hmm. um, you know, the minute we sign something or say we're canceling or, you know, breaching our contract pretty much later on, because again, they're not the only ones, you know, these vendors and these venues are going to move on to assist the rest of the couples that have been affected. So it's almost like just, you know, stop. There is, it's one of those things we cannot control. Um, let's focus on some other things that maybe you've been wanting to do with your partner, your fiance. I think that this also shows that if you can get through this, you know, that's, there's so many other things in marriage that are going to come up that are a lot worse than this. I know that sounds yeah. crazy, but this is kind of like a test of the beginning uh, chapters of your lives. And a lot of people too, I've seen it on Facebook and, you know, on Instagram, it is a luxury to have these weddings and, you know, certain, certain price points that, Right now, if, if all that matters is the date, then yes, do something special with your partner. If the date doesn't matter, then pause. And when the time comes, we'll have this amazing celebration at another time. And I think that that's where everyone should be, but because they're not um, sourcing the correct, um, I guess, information or, or venting in the correct groups, I think it's just starting to, to start a chain of panic and a frustration and so that's the other reason why I wanted to do these calls and these um, Facebook lives is to also educate the couples to come because there's a lot of people that have weddings planned later on this year or actually starting to wedding plan. Um, you know, we're having tours this weekend. People are, don't want to be home. And so it's almost like a blessing in disguise for other couples going down the road saying, you know, what should we be looking at? 
how should we prepare for plan B? Nobody ever wants to prepare for a plan B for a wedding. Um, but because of what's going on now, I think couples are going to take a little more time with researching, um, understanding really what their vendor vendors are giving them for the money that they're paying. Um, this, this something that I, we talked about earlier today was sometimes cutting the cost, you know, in some of your areas is going to hurt you later on because you didn't read your research, because you didn't read your contracts, because you decided you didn't want to really pay for a certain vendor. So I think this is also great education for the couples to come. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I agree a hundred percent. There was a lot in there to unpack. Um, but one of the things you mentioned is that there are hard things that are going to happen in your marriage. There are hard things that are going to happen in your life. And you guys, there's a lot of crap that's out of your control. And this is just a prime example that's slapping you in the face right now. And I am sorry. And I hurt for you because I have been there. I have gone through things where I was like, not expecting it completely blindsided me and you work through it and you have to learn to be at peace amidst the unknown. And I know that's really hard right now, but all I can tell you guys is you will have the day you are envisioning at some point. I can't tell you when, but if you keep building towards this, it will happen. And it may be in six months. It may be in a year, it may be in two years. I don't know, but I do know if that's what you want to do and you keep working towards it, it will come together. And in the short term, if you do want to take a break, if it's too much to try to figure it out right now, when you cannot make a clear, cohesive plan, like I said, pause, take a step back, give yourself time, go tap into something like the wedding hacker expo. We have a bunch of experts on relationship stuff, on personal finance stuff, like work on yourself, work on your relationship and come back to this because the party is celebrating a lifetime commitment. So you can do that later. It, your lifetime is going to be hopefully very long. Let's keep you home and safe right now so that it is. And you know, you can celebrate that later with all the people who desperately want to be there loving on you and showering you guys at this special time. So, um, yeah, those are, those are the points on that. I, I kind of went off on a tangent, but go ahead. Jessica. Okay. <laughs> no, I think it's true. And I think, you know, something about this situation really kind of puts a lot of it into perspective, doesn't it? It kind of makes you think, I think there are some people, you know, that I've seen in, in my Facebook group who have said, oh, well, this has really opened my eyes to how not important all of like the decor and like flowers and like all the extra stuff, the luxuries kind of, of having a wedding, how not as important it is as having the people there who mean the most to them. And so it's kind of brought some things into perspective. And, and I do think that um, even though this situation is really tough and frustrating and probably like you know, devastating, honestly, for, for so many people, um, try to use this time, like in a positive way, whether it's, you know, bringing you and your partner closer together and, and working together towards, um, you know, your plan B or, you know, taking advantage of the resources that are out there, like the Wedding Hacker Expo and, and others to, you know, just enrich your lives at this time. We've got a lot of free time on our hands. We're kind of stuck at home, most people right now. So um, take advantage of it and, um, and put it to good use. Yeah. Um, I want to touch upon something else that I've noticed in the groups that I'm working with is I've actually seen a lot of couples turn this situation that's so frustrating into something really beautiful. Um, there have been couples who donate the food that the caterer already bought that they're just going to lose money on and they are dropping it off at meals and wheels there or meals on wheels. Yeah, that's right. I'm like, did I say that backwards? <laughs> and also the florals dropping them off places where folks can use them. It can brighten up their spirits at this difficult time. So things like that are really heroic that these couples are taking something that otherwise would have just been a loss to them and trying to make good on it. And I think all of us have something to add to the world. All of us can bring joy and support and, you know, check in on our friends and family. Like there's a lot there that we can all do. And so getting outside of yourself is one of those things that really helps you when you're in a dark place. And when you're starting to sit on that pity pot and feel like, Oh, I am in the worst place. This is the most terrible thing. And it is, this is terrible. If your wedding is can 
purpose and you had envisioned it for your whole life, yeah, that sucks. But there are things in the world heavier than that and people out there who are needing support and even just tapping into that and recognizing it helps you feel a little bit better and realize, wow, I, I can make a difference in the world. And it starts bringing that momentum towards a positive way, which is so important at this time. Like we all want to be lifting each other up. Yeah, I like that. And I also wanted to kind of bring up, I know we talked about the vendors a little bit, but a lot of just hostility and anger that's happening um, with vendors because I don't, again, I don't think that there's a lot of education around, you know, the behind the scenes about what they're doing and what they've been doing up until then and how, if you know, they, we still have to work. Um, we still have to book weddings because we, we may not be able to make it two, three, four, you know, four weeks without doing that. And I think just the way you handle your relationship and, and I, this is a two way street because again, this has never really happened other than whether like this happened during Harvey for us in, in Houston and it, you know, it was really sad, but we came together as a, as a city, as a state, but sometimes, and this is a great learning situation, vendors and couples don't know how to articulate and how to speak to one another or how to text to one another, another or email. So I really want to touch up on that about how we should be, you know, both ways respecting one another um, and not canceling these services because Again, contracts are different with everyone. Um, we're not we're not trying to give uh, the answer or the solution, but we're trying to give you tips and really just be understanding with your vendors. What do y'all have to say with that, about that? I think it's oh sure. I think it's so important to just be like as gracious as possible. Obviously, this is no one's fault. No one could have predicted this. This is a completely unprecedented situation. I, I would venture to say that the majority of vendors have never encountered something like this before. We're all kind of navigating new territory together. So we need to remember to be kind to one another and be gracious to your vendors because ultimately you chose them because you trust them to help you plan like the, the this really super special day for you guys, right? And so you should respect their contracts they are legal agreements that you've signed. Obviously, you're going to want to like look through them and find out what the options are. In most cases, I do think that vendors are being really gracious and generous and extending the ability to rebook and postpone at a later date, which in some cases, like they don't have to based on their contracts, you know? So at that point, you really do need to be just gracious and, and thankful that they're willing to work with you on, on things like that. Um, ultimately, above all, I think just remembering to be kind to one another and, and gracious under the situation because everyone wants the best wedding day for you guys. The vendors do just as much as you do. And if you work together to find solutions, like that's going to be the best result. Yeah, absolutely. I think keeping in mind that everyone did not want this to happen. I don't think there's a single vendor, a single couple that would have in any way been like, great, this disaster's happening. No, no one wanted this. Everyone is on the same page that they want to get you through your day in a way where you're going to be so happy. So just remember that going into it. And also the phrase of you attract more bees with honey, you're, you're gonna come out way better <laughs> in this situation if you're reaching out to vendors, assuming they have your best interest at heart and approaching them going, how can we make this work for both of us? And being understand, understanding that these are folks who work basically on a, on a gig-based system. I mean, they're service providers. So when services aren't happening, money's not coming in and the bills don't get paid. And that's really scary for them too. So depending on where you're at financially, obviously some of you may also be in a very tight spot. Maybe you're a, a waitress or you're out doing a service job too that's really shut down right now. So just being aware of that and communicating that and, and doing it in a way where it's not hostile, it doesn't have to be aggressive, just very clear and to the point going, this is the situation I have. How can we work through this? What is our best approach to this for everyone to make it through this together? And ultimately, this is the sort of situation where the community has to remotely band together um, to get through this since that's the only way we're going to make it through is doing the things that are going to support each other 
manner, we all stay healthy and stay strong and are able to continue on financially and do well and support each other. Yeah. And that's, again, the, the point I was trying to make that, you know, vendors are dealing with four, eight, 12, 16, 20, depending on how many, you know, events they have booked in this amount of time. And also depending on which city and state they're in, y'all aren't the only ones. So it's, you know, I don't want it to sound selfish, but it is, we're, we're dealing with multiple couples. Um, and so it's just, we, everyone's a priority, but we also, you know, want to have the same respect that we're giving out to them. And, and again, the re I'm very lucky to have amazing vendors and amazing couples, but I've just seen that that's not um, something that's happening. And again, we're not thinking it's emotional based. We're having, we're sending these messages. We're not even really having a conversation, which I think is also a little important, but uh, just supporting one another. Um, one of the things that I have committed to doing and already started this week was having just one page where you can go and, and look at tools and resources that are available with real running experts, certified wedding professionals, where couples can go and look and see, okay, you know what, I've been doing a DIY wedding this whole time. I want to get some more information, some more education. So I'm going to go see Jessica. I'm going to go see Heather. Or you know what, I'm working with some amazing wedding professionals, but they're really busy right now taking care of other couples. I'm going to go see, you know, Lauren and Meg on these two pages. So I want to be able to provide those resources going forward. Um, and I, again, I know you both have amazing Facebook groups and um, you, Heather, have a club that people can join and your virtual expo. So I'll definitely have all of those things in the show notes and I'll have them on our um, link tree, our Facebook and our Instagram. But before we kind of wrap this up, is there anything that you both, either one of you want to touch on any other topic that maybe I didn't talk about to just let couples and vendors know that we are all in this together. You wanna uh, go ahead? <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead this time. Um, okay, basically reach out for help. Um, you guys don't just have your vendors backing you up. You should have maybe a wedding party, relatives, other folks, and obviously, again, this is all happening remotely. This is kind of this weird isolating time but you do have people who care about you and want to support you. So don't feel like you have to go through this alone. Um, ask for folks to help you do a phone tree and call your sister who calls five people who they call five people and spread the word. Everything doesn't have to go through you and it can be emotionally taxing to have everyone reaching out to you, texting and asking, you know, is it happening? Are we doing the wedding? What's going on? What's the update? And you're just like, whoa, I can't process this anymore. I can't tell the sad story again. So ask other folks to jump in in between and um, help you handle that and give you a little bit of a buffer. I think that's enormous. I've actually had several folks reach out to me asking, what can I do for my friends? What can I do for uh, my sister who had this wedding coming up? And, and that is really the role you can play is asking them, how can I help? What can I do? Can I call a vendor and go through this conversation for you and, and report back the information? Or um, like I said, spread the word to other guests, um, help design a new postponement announcement, whatever, whatever the case may open up to. But there are people who want to help you. So just don't feel alone. We're, we're all backing you up. And we, again, all want to see this day come together beautifully for you. Thousand yeah. percent. <laughs> And I know that Lauren from Every Last Detail did put a template together that you can email out. And she has how to even talk about it, how to uninvite your guest, um, what, you know, all of those things are already available so people don't have to recreate it. And that's one of the first things that um, I'll be sending to my couples for their guests, but just having it available because anybody can grab an email list and send that out. Um, and it's also available to text. So, you know, those for people who are more, you know, about responding towards text. So those tools are already there. I mean, we're here within the third, fourth day of the, all this news. Um, but I thought, you know, just having us together and, and just still being there for one another with any of the questions that may come up tomorrow, next week, um, having the real wedding certified experts be able to help couples and vendors throughout this time. Yeah. And just don't feel like you have to rush either. I think that's a big thing. A lot of couples, even I see couples whose weddings are in October, like way out still. And they're like, Oh my God, I got to get ahead of this. And it's like, let the people who have April, May, you know, these upcoming months process all this, get new dates on the calendar and just wait it out a little because you may be absolutely fine. And your October wedding is very likely going to be not only an amazing, amazing celebration of your love, but also of everyone being 
person to hug each other. So let's hope that that's where we're at by then. So um, give yourself space, give yourself time. If you're rescheduling the same thing, you can just communicate with your vendors. We want to postpone. We want to do this. Let your guests know, hey, it's to be, to be determined. We will follow up in a few months once things settle down and we'll set a date. And especially if you're feeling anxious and you're getting this, this uncertainty is kind of driving you crazy, just, just again, shelf it, communicate with people. No one is going to be you know, upset with you to not be able to see the future. Like you don't have a crystal ball. You can't guarantee that August is going to work. So if you don't feel ready to commit to that date, don't, and, and just communicate with everyone and, and let them know you'll, you'll give them information as soon as you feel ready to do it. And that is perfectly okay. Thank you, Heather. Well, thank you both for being on. I really appreciate it. Um, like I said, I'll have everything available for couples and even if vendors want to reach out to us as well. Um, and then I will, can you remind everybody tomorrow for your, your time for your yeah. individual group chat? What is, what time is it's that? It's going to be uh, 5 p.m. Pacific. So it's a little later in the evening. You know, if any of you did have to work, you can, you know, work from home in the day or whatever you got going on. And then we'll have a little chat. And actually, if you sign up, um, you can send in your questions to me beforehand so I can have them all queued up because we'll, we'll fire through them real fast. Perfect. So I'll have that available right away. And Jessica, I'll also have your group. Um, any other tools that you can think of um, that you want to talk or tell couples about? Sure. Yeah. We've published a few posts on the blog this week, um, just about like the latest updates, um, about closures and things. And then as well, um, what to do if you're postponing, um, and we're publishing another one tomorrow about, um, how to kind of shift your thinking to do like a quickie elopement or micro situation, if that's what you want to do. And then have the, the bigger party later, if you are one of those couples who's really attached to your date. So yeah. Perfect. Well, I'll have all that available. Thank you so much, ladies. You'll have a wonderful afternoon. And I'm so happy to just be part of this team and be able to give this information to everyone. Absolutely. Thanks for putting this together. Thank I you. Stay safe and healthy, everybody. Yes. You will.